quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. The Caravel was a small, fast sailing ship. The Spanish and Portuguese explored the African coast and the Atlantic Ocean with caravels, which evolved from a medieval fishing boat called the Caribus in Spain. Caravel's Latin sails gave it speed and the ability to sail windward, essential for facing the mighty trade winds. Caravel were the primary ships used for exploration during the Age of Discovery. Christopher Columbus discovered the New World in 1492 with the Caravels Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. Howdy folks, thanks again for setting sail with us on another typewriting adventure. As Kevin noted, the caravel was an important tool for the voyages of exploration and discovery in the 15th century. And in that sense, this Pencrest caravel really lives up to its name. It too is a great tool for discovery, creativity, and adventure. Let's check it out. Here we have a 1968 Pencrest caravel 10. It's been made by Smith Corona for J.C. Penney under the J.C. Penney uh, store brand Pencrest. And like the ship, this Caravel 10 is an evolution of previous designs that have really come together nicely. So the Caravel evolved from an early fishing boat, it was lightweight, nimble, meant for speed, and a lot of that same uh, characteristics can be describing the Pencrest Caravel 10. So, what you see in front of you is essentially a Super Sterling. You have the same keyboard layout as the Super Sterling, uh, but you then also have some enhancements. So just quickly covering, you've got a standard QWERTY layout, you've got a dedicated number one key, which interestingly enough is different color than the other keys, um, but you have some other notable differences. You have, for example, an automatic space key down here, which is not found on the Super Sterling, of course, and also the change of type key, which is what this black color indicates. So that's a key that can be changed by removing this type slug, which you can't quite see, but up here can be replaced to pretty much any character you want, but by default comes with a dedicated exclamation point and number one. Um, other features that this Pencrest has, which is different from the Super Sterling, is it has knurled platen knobs, which may not sound like too big of a deal, but it's a total different design. You've got black knurled platen knobs, which were found on the galaxies of this vintage in the, in the 60s. Um, so that's kind of a combination of features you have between the Super Sterling and then also the galaxies. And of course you have the auto space here on the Caravel 10. And a little bit later we'll see that they reserved another feature, which was the half space for the Caravel 12, uh, which of course has a 12-inch platen as opposed to a 10-inch platen as this one does. All right. So going over the features, you've got your standard return arm, you've got your line select lever on the upper left corner, three, two, one, you've got the standard page gauge, which Smith Corona gave you. You set your page gauge to 11, then you insert your paper, and that will help you count down how much paper you have remaining as you type. Very useful feature. You've got your uh, margin controls set here. You have a nice rabbit ear paper support. You have your line retainer, I believe they call that, and that essentially lets you freewheel the platen for line spacing needs on forms. And then when you're done with the freewheeling, you select it and it will return to your single spacing and it will help you retain your line spacing. I don't think anybody will probably ever use that feature much anymore. You have a fully removable platen, which is just a real boon to those who want to clean their platens. And they did this not simply for platen cleaning in the day, but because you could replace your platen uh, with a variety of different ones if you needed to, some of which were better for carbon making, etc. Your uh, ribbon cover, unlike the Super Sterling, isn't rounded, but has a more geometric shape, and I think really nice styling, and that really is what we're talking about here with this Pencrest variant of the Super Sterling, if you will, this Caravel 10. So you've got 
One, the color, which I really like, is kind of a champagne uh, metallic co color with uh, chrome highlights and then transparent clear, translucent clear. The Pencrest logo, of course. So let's pop the hood off. This one has great rubber grommets holding it in so we can see. And a pretty standard Pika or Pika typeface. You've got your uh, standard, much shrunken, I guess. Uh, we've got a basket shift, but you've also got your card guides and uh, line selector, um, sorry, your tabulator guides. You have a tabulator down here, which is your clear and your set, and then your tab key, of course, will function the tab function. So the auto space is one of my kids' favorite <laughs> functions on any typewriter. It really is fun. It gives you the sense that you have an electric typewriter uh, in a manual. It's all done by spring power. You just press it. And you got your little machine gun sound, single spacing here, all the spacing there. A shot of the back end of the Pencrest Caravelle 10 uh, shows you your Made in the USA, you've got your Pencrest logo. As I mentioned, you've got pop-up rabbit ear paper supports. This particular example has both of its carriage release levers intact, and that is increasingly challenging to find, and we're all working on a 3D printed solution to fix these. Typewriter Minutes is blazing the path and others, so I hope to have a 3D printed solution in the near future to fix all those various Smith Coronas that we have in stock that don't have full uh, carriage release levers. You can work around it, but it's kind of annoying to not have these, these plastic pieces. All right, let's do just a real quick two-finger typing test. The quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. Take a zoom in on that, let you take a look at the font. All right, so one of the things you'll see I did on this paper is showed you the output from a 1971 Smith Corona Super Sterling we had, and you can see it's pretty much identical. So if there were any uh, conspiracy theorists that thought that maybe Smith Corona didn't make this machine, I guess all your doubts have been put to rest because the Pencrest Caravelle 10 is definitely the same Pika typeface, Pika typeface as uh, the uh, Caravelle. So these machines were made under contract. Um, some say to at a lesser cost than the Smith Corona models, or directly under pressure that Sears and J.C. Penney really put the screws on Smith Corona. But I tend to really like the Pencrest and Tower models and their different stylings than, more so than I generally like the standard Smith Corona one. So whatever the department store buyers were doing, the typewriter buyers who were issuing their dictates to the major typewriter manufacturers, it sort of seemed like they knew what they were doing, and I appreciate this. Now, it could be just that these machines are less common, or at least down, down south where we are, they're less common, and therefore we like them more. But I really like the additional features that they have. I like the auto space option you have. Uh, on this model versus the Super Sterling. And of course, I always value the change of type key, although I don't think this feature ever really took off. Uh, we do have a, a pretty large collection of these change of type keys, and they're fun to give it the option. And of course, having a dedicated one exclamation point is a nice feature uh, to have in any typewriter, but not fully necessary, of course. So all in all, it's a very good typewriter. All the rugged reliability that you expect in the Smith Corona, completely um, reliable, Good type, good touch, good feel, uh, just an all-around very good machine that, uh, that we really like. So the pros, cool styling, they're less common. It has a hybrid features. You've got the black fluted knobs of the Galaxy class, and you have the uh, auto space key, and a little bit, this is sort of a, neither a plus nor a minus, but the standard uh, keycaps from the Corsair era. Um, in terms of cons or things not to like about the Caravelle, especially when relating it to the uh, Super Sterling upon which it is based, I guess you could have to say if you're allergic to chocolate and <laughs> you don't like it and you won't like it. But other than that, we find that the Caravelle 10 is just an all-around great machine. And just to give you a, another little a flyby, we happen to also have a less common, I think, Pencrest Caravelle, not a Caravelle 10, but a Caravelle, which is based on a 5 series, and it has a very similar color scheme. And if you'll just give me a second, I'll bring that one into view. Now, a quick visual comparison to the Pencrest Caravelle 10, which came out in, six, well, ours came out in 68. So late 1950s, we have here a Pencrest Caravelle, which is a 10, which is clearly based on the Sterling, 
not the super sterling, but the sterling. You don't have your dedicated one. You certainly don't have an auto space key. You have the older 1950s keyboard layout. It's kind of interesting because in the sterlings of that era, they had a rounded uh, cap, but of course, into the future and then back in the past, they liked the uh, squared off. And this is neat because it lifts up, it's attached. It's just identical, of course, to the Model 5s. You've got all the standard five features with your pop-up rabbit ears and your margin selector, line space selector, all that good stuff. So visually, you can certainly see that they remain true to their stylings. You've got a sort of a champagne color with a chocolate top, and here we have a chocolate top with a champagne cover and a little bit more uh, silver trim. But two very stylish machines, and I don't think you see them together all that often, so we're glad to have uh, two of them together here. And last but not least, here we have something you could think of as being the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, the three caravels that carried Columbus across the ocean. I think the Santa Maria was the larger of them, so this caravel 12 would have to be the Santa Maria. And as you can see on the 12, you got not one, but two change of type characters, keys, and you got the added bonus of having a half space key in addition to your auto space key. Uh, this machine we have not touched, but what we did find on it, which was kind of funny, for us anyway, is this uh, little note, Milton, this ribbon is dry. Uh, must have gotten hot in the tray. Train, I don't know. I can't read the rest of it. But you would think, well, that could be anybody, right? Except we also have the original owner's manual of this Caravel 1012. And this is really special when you find this information. I don't think it will be too bad for disclosing that it, September 9th, 1980, Mr. Milton C. Gilbert and his P.O. Box in Chesterfield, Missouri, bought this Pencrest 12 for $65, 6801 out the door. I have his MasterCard number, which I'm sure is no longer valid, and uh, walked out the door. So this is your blue uh, painted uh, Caravel 12, also a very good looking. It has a 12-inch carriage, um, another great option. Uh, and like I said, the Santa Maria, the Nina, and the Pinta, all for your viewing pleasure. Please like, and subscribe, and share.